a KQED HD production. For centuries, astronomers have gazed at the night sky, searching for clues that could help them decipher its celestial secrets. Today, powerful telescopes bring into vivid focus the stunning array of stars, comets, and planetary giants, which have inspired journeys real and imagined. Still, mystery abounds in this vast cosmic landscape, especially within the infinitely dense, dark abyss of a black hole. Most people actually don't know very much about black holes. You know, they're these mysterious things they've heard about on TV, in sci-fi movies, but they haven't been taught what black holes really are. With his team at the University of California, Berkeley, Alex Filipenko has helped discover a dozen black holes. But the black holes he hunts bear little resemblance to those shown on the silver screen. So here I have a short video clip from the 1979 Disney movie, The Black Hole. And this crew here is in this rocket ship that's gonna dive into a black hole, hopefully to another universe. But, you know, this just isn't gonna happen because look at that disk of material. It's gonna emit huge amounts of radiation. It's really hot. That's gonna melt and vaporize them. Science fiction aside, black holes are weird. They trap light and influence nearby objects in extreme ways. To understand why, it helps to learn how these space oddities are formed from dying stars dozens of times more massive than the sun. Here I have two sheets of black paper. If I crumple one of them up like this, its size is now much smaller, but its mass is the same. Now this relates to black holes. If you have the core of a massive star, at the end of its life, that core can collapse so that it becomes really dense and its local gravity becomes so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. And that's a black hole. Even time is subject to the bizarre effects of black holes. Inside strong gravitational fields, time actually slows down. So to an observer just outside a black hole, time would appear to stop. Albert Einstein first recognized the influence of gravity on time with his general theory of relativity in 1916. Einstein's revolutionary idea was that mass and energy warp or curve the shape of space and the passage of time around them. And that gives you the concept of a black hole, a place where the warping is so big that nothing, not even light, can escape. The more massive and dense an object is, the more it warps the space around it and the more powerful its gravity becomes on nearby objects. Here's a flat sheet of fabric, and if I release a ping pong ball, it goes along a straight line, like that. But now if I put a tennis ball on top, the shape of the fabric gets warped, and if I release the ping pong ball, it follows a curved path, an orbit, because it's following its natural path in this intrinsically curved space. That's what gravity is. When a star orbits a black hole, the gravity around the black hole is so strong that it pulls dust and gas from the star. This material then spins into a bright, hot disk which spirals around and eventually falls into the hungry black hole. Black holes aren't just dark and boring. They have all this activity around them. They energize particles to huge energies, and those particles can emit huge amounts of light. So while black holes can't actually be seen, their extreme effects on their surroundings can be seen and measured, as in the case of a star orbiting the black hole IC10X1. We have here a series over time of the wavelength of light. And you can see that the wavelength is shifting back and forth over 34 hours. It's moving away from us at a couple of hundred kilometers per second, then toward us, then back away from us. So this suggests that the visible star is orbiting something, yet it's completely dark. We only see the visible star, not the object that's making it move. So this is a dark star 30 times the mass of the sun, almost certainly a black hole. 
twice as massive as the previously most massive one known. So we're learning stuff about black holes all the time. But as big as this stellar black hole is, it's tiny compared to the supermassive black holes at the center of every major galaxy. It used to be thought that black holes were rare and exotic, but we now know that a massive black hole, and by massive I mean a million to a billion times the mass of our own sun, lurks in the heart of every galaxy. And there are billions of galaxies. While black holes are far from rare, they are invisible. So it has typically taken scientists months, even years, to confirm the presence of a single black hole. But now a new high-tech hunter is able to scan the cosmos and swiftly detect these elusive giants. It's called New Star, a $166 million telescope launched by NASA in June 2012. Mission Control is located at UC Berkeley, where a team of scientists tracks its orbit 300 miles above Earth. I will see you on the next orbit in about 90 minutes. To date, astronomers have identified roughly 100 black holes. But with its X-ray vision, New Star is expected to spot hundreds more in galaxies billions of light years away during its two-year mission. The dust and gas in the galaxy gets attracted by the gravity of the black hole. When it gets close enough, it organizes itself into a disk. And the friction in this disk heats the material up until it's 10,000 times the temperature of our sun. And this makes it glow brightly in the high energy X-ray. So if we point a high energy X-ray telescope at the sky, we know we're gonna see the glow of many black holes. The high-energy X-rays emitted near black holes are similar to those used for medical imaging. Thanks to its revolutionary lens design, New Star can bring these telltale signs of black holes into focus. What you're looking at here is part of the lens of New Star. There's actually 4,000 of these pieces of glass. The glass itself is very thin. It's two thicknesses of a human hair. To make these mirrors work, we need to have the x-rays come in and reflect off the surface, be bent. The x-rays then travel the length of a school bus, 33 feet, to come to a point of focus on a digital detector. Very much like the CCD in your digital camera, it collects the light and makes an image. And we make that image and look for very bright sources those bright sources, those are indicators of black holes because those are only produced in the very extreme conditions around a black hole. In addition, New Star's X-ray images will be 10 times sharper than those taken with older, less sensitive telescopes. This is the best view that we've had to date of this bright glow. It's like trying to read a book without your glasses on. But after New Star looks at the same region of sky, this is what it'll see it'll pinpoint this X-ray light uh, into individual sources, each one of which is the hallmark of a supermassive black hole. It's gonna be able to make out the colors. The red uh, black holes are ones that are hidden behind screens of dust and gas. This blue dot indicates a black hole that's not hidden behind dust and gas. Chief scientists Fiona Harrison and instrument manager William Craig have been working for 10 years to get New Star off the ground. Hey, congratulations on the hey. successful launch. Yeah, not only that, successful mass deployment. Today, right? Today, yeah. so it's going the first black hole New Star will set its sights on is Cygnus X1. In 1972, it provided the first strong evidence that black holes are real. I was 14 and in high school when I first heard of Cygnus X1 possibly being a black hole, and it was so exciting, you know. But New Star will do more than just count black holes. It will also sift through the aftermath of violent supernova explosions that can signal the birth of black holes. So even if you don't care about black holes, New Star is going to shed light on how we came to be. It's going to be able to look at the remnants of supernovae that happened over the last few hundred years in our galaxy and see them glowing in radioactivity. Now, it's the radioactive material that decays to form the elements on Earth and in our bodies. We can pose questions and seek to understand what we see. Does a giant black hole form first and then it attracts a bunch of material to form a giant galaxy? or is the growth of a galaxy 
essentially at the same time as the growth of the black hole in the center. Decades after their discovery, black holes continue to intrigue and captivate. They are a source of wonder, a unique cosmic laboratory to test and challenge the laws of physics. When I look out at the night sky, I think, you know, we're just a tiny speck. But then we're a speck that can come up with amazing things like black holes and come to an understanding of how it all works. That, to me, is amazing.